So ever since I was a kid, I always wanted to be an archaeologist. I saw the Jurassic Park movies, thought it would be cool, and then as an adult, I had no desire to do that again. But today, we're going to become an archaeologist again because we have one of those dinosaur dig kits. So inside of this little package, there is a little working toolkit. And the fun thing is the plaster block that has dinosaur bones inside. The idea is to create a diorama of this so we can search for dinosaur bones like my friend Jeff Goldblum. I'm Jeff Goldblum. Blitz! Uh, that's my favorite channel. Since Blitz is such good friends with Jeff, we thought it'd be great to make our own diorama based off of Jurassic Park, like the dig site where Dr. Grant traumatizes a 12-year-old. So the first thing I needed to do to get started was to remove the Jurassic Park logo from the plaster block. I started out by using an X-Acto knife, and then realized that was probably a really good way to get cut, and it was going to take forever, so instead I used some sandpaper. Once that was nice and smooth, I moved on to uncovering the dinosaur bones in the plaster block. I wanted to uncover enough to make it look like they were just starting to get dug up and discovered. I could have used the little toy tools that the kit came with, but that wasn't going to give me the results I was looking for. And using a real fossil hammer was a great way to speedrun getting the bones out and destroy the project. I had to be very careful cutting around the bones with the knife. Then again, the more I worked, the better the big hammer was looking. After three hours of pain in the name of science, my hands were super sore, so I stopped when there was probably enough bone visible to work with. I mean, no one said we had to find all the bones. My dinosaur bones were then looking very lonely by themselves, so the next step was to build up the ground around the plaster block. The goal was to make this look like terrain you'd see out in the South Dakota Badlands. And yes, I've totally been there, and I know exactly what they look like. I used foam boards to build the terrain up around the block and make it look more... hilly? Hill-like? It has hills. And then I was just gonna glue the pieces together and call it a day. But then I remembered, foam doesn't happen in nature, so I should make it look more natural. After I had some of the bigger foam pieces in place, I used smaller scraps of foam to blend everything together at the seam. There was also leftover plaster from digging out the bones, which I repurposed as rockfall. Once the front part was looking pretty good, I took that whole chunk and I put it on a bigger piece of foam that would become the rest of the diorama. Next, I built up another cliff face with foam behind the block. I needed to cut away a bit of the back piece, so that little bit of bone at the back of the plaster block could still be visible. Otherwise, the process was same as the front. Cut foam, glue, then plaster. Next, I had the idea to add some people to the scene to make the dig site look more lively. I found some character models on Thingiverse, and there was an archaeologist model holding some tools that worked for what I needed. I tried doing a couple of test prints of the archaeologist after I gave him a cute little Indiana Jones hat, but most of the details didn't turn out or were very small and ended up breaking off when I was removing supports. So without a resin printer, it wasn't really worth it. Instead, I went the route of just adding evidence of people at the dig site and decided to create a little campsite and campfire as well as adding some other details. The next step was to move on to painting, but before I could do that, I needed to cut out a hole that would fit a tea light to later become my campfire. Now the whole thing was looking very smooth, which is not ideal. So I mixed up some more plaster and left it really runny and used that to coat the whole thing, minus the bones, to give it an extra muddy texture. When I went on to paint the ground color, I didn't have a brown paint that was the right shade that I needed, so I ended up just mixing a bunch until I managed to make a color that looked good. Somehow, dark brown and peach ended up making the right muddy clay color. I put down a base coat of that tan muddy clay color that I mixed up all over the whole diorama, and that gave me a really good place to start creating the actual look of the ground and let that dry. It did end up drying a bit lighter than I wanted, but it still looked good, so it gets to stay. Next, I added some rust pigment powder all over the place to show the ready brown clay deposits in the earth, and this also helped add a lot of depth to the diorama. So for applying this to the scene, I used a really big fluffy brush just to get a nice dusting of the pigment, and then where I accidentally added too much, I just blew off the excess. I put the powder on really thick on the rock faces and all over the rock fall, and then I really piled it in around the dig holes and around the bones to emphasize that clay coloring. I picked up the pigment powder from one of the game stores in town that has a lot of supplies for creating dioramas and miniatures for stuff like D&D and Warhammer. That's also where I got most of the other supplies that I used on this project. And because I don't ever plan to move this diorama ever again once it's done, I didn't bother to seal it or add adhesive to hold the powder in place. So this is an indoor diorama only. The bones themselves were looking a bit too clean and plasticky, so to add some extra depth to them and to make them look a bit more realistic, we ended up mixing up some of the rust pigment with some dark gray paint and then created a bit of a paste. And then we were able to add that mix between the individual ribs and then some of the other bones. 
I also found some fake foliage that's supposed to look like dried up grass and brush. I added a little bush to the diorama, and a second one, because everyone deserves a friend. And then I put some more around the diorama to make the environment a bit more interesting and add some variation to it. That stuff was also super nice to put on, because it has an adhesive backing so I didn't have to glue it in place. I did have to pay attention to where I was placing the fake grass though, because it won't stick wherever there's powder. Next I wanted to make it look like the dig site had been roped off. I used some nails that I picked up from Walmart as posts for rope. I was screaming inside the entire time I was hammering these in, praying that that plaster block would not crack or break, or that I didn't hit myself in the face. And I hated this part immensely. But they all went in fine, so everything was good, and then I was able to add some orange thread as rope, tied that off on my nails, and then added some glue to make sure that they wouldn't come undone. Then I moved on to making the campsite for the scene and wanted to add a tent to it. Thankfully, the game store that I mentioned earlier also had some miniature tents that I think are supposed to be for Civil War camps, but they ended up looking really good for what I needed. So I picked out one of the tents, painted it a nice olive green canvas color, and then that ended up looking a lot better than the plastic gray color that it started out as. I also painted the tent posts, and once the whole thing was dry, I added some rust pigment around the bottom edges. Finally, it was time to make the campfire. I could have just shoved the whole tea light in there, but instead, I chose violence and mutilated a poor tea light to become the base for my campfire. Now the only tea lights I had on hand were a bright white color, and I thought maybe putting some yellow highlighter on the LED would help make it less white and take out some of that blue tone, but that ended up being a terrible idea. Do as I say, not as I do, and do not make the same mistake. I ended up paying for it later, having to cover up this horrible greeny yellow highlighter color. To go over my tea light, I ended up finding a little campfire on Thingiverse, and then I added a hole in the bottom that would then go over my LED, and then I printed that out in some transparent filament. Once that was finished printing, I then super glued it to the end of my LED just to hold everything in place. After that was dry, I started by painting the bottom of the campfire to match the rest of the ground in the diorama. Then I painted the wood for the campfire brown. Finally, I attempted to paint the flame with yellow and oranges to try and make that look as realistic as possible, and then I touched up any other spots that needed it. I think it turned out pretty alright. This is then where I realized maybe I should have used the whole tea light. Because now the hole that I had cut out in the diorama was too big, because I sized it to the tea light when the outside case was still on it. So I ended up using these fake rocks I got with all my other supplies to surround my fire and create a sort of a fire pit. And this also made it big enough not to just fall straight through the hole in the diorama. And once it was glued in place, I also added some more rocks around it, and this was to hide the light where I didn't want it to shine through. Once everything was glued in place and looking good, I just added one last coat of rust pigment all over that to make it look like it matched and so it wouldn't stand out. And with those finishing touches to my campfire, the diorama was done. I really enjoyed making this diorama and I love how it turned out. It really does look like it could be from the movie. I think Jeff would approve. But let me know what you guys think, and thanks for watching.